What's up, YouTube? It's been a long time, but we're finally here for the 3.18 league announcement. Now I know I haven't been making a lot of videos lately, but I should be returning to daily videos. We will be making a lot of build guys now that all of the best builds are already known. Now I'm going to give you my full rundown of the Sentinel League, what my thoughts are about it, and how I actually think the meta of the end game will shift, and if there's going to be any shifts at all. And I'm going to give my honest opinion about what I think about Sentinel League. And as you may know, I actually had a pretty bad opinion of Arch Nemesis League. I thought the expansion was amazing, but the Arch Nemesis League mechanic itself was terrible, mainly because of the UI. And man, look at this fight. This fight looks amazing, right? So many balls everywhere are going to smack you in the face. But that aside, let's get started and see what exactly this new league has brought us. So this is going to be a 3.18 rundown. Now it is releasing on May 13th of 2022. Now make sure if you haven't already asked your employers for three months off, not one, not two, but three months, because that's how long it's going to take you to clear the full end game now of the new pinnacle bosses. Now you might wonder, be wondering, why is there a trickster here drinking some copium? Now the reason is that Tricksters thought they were going to get buffed. In fact, they thought there might be even a new skill that allowed them to be stronger. Now, Trickster can also be a Juggernaut, as those are some of the most underused ascendancies. And it turns out they were just drinking copium and or inhaling copium, and that there are no changes whatsoever. And I also saw this funny comment on Reddit in what's it called the patch notes, and it said that YouTube bill guide spammer is going to be filing for unemployment. So I've actually been filing for unemployment recently. So yeah. But one of the most important changes that this actual live stream told us about, right? So this is going to be like the topics I talk about in this video. And I'm going to summarize it real fast. The so Sentinels, basically, you pick the Sentinels up, you equip them. You can use the Sentinels once per map. There's three Sentinels total. The Sentinels will empower the enemies or by making them do more damage or take less damage. And when you kill the enemies, they will drop rewards, right? So it's kind of like Arch Nemesis in the sense that you can choose what type of rewards you get, I think. And But there's going to be a lot less micromanagement within the map, which is going to be really, really good. So there's no game balance changes at all or new skills, right? So they pretty much said that the meta was good enough. They wanted people to play with the meta a little bit more. Now they added a little bit more end game. So yeah, so we already know what all the best builds are. And this is actually a pretty big one. They made rare and magic monster modifiers. They replaced them all of the Arch Nemesis modifiers. Now this is going to have a huge impact on the meta and we'll talk about that later. But basically, all the Arch Nemesis modifiers you saw like Bone Breaker, Consecrator, all of those ones you love, Toxic, are going to become rare modifiers that are doing this to make it more simple to see what mods a rare actually has. And of course, they improved the end game by adding new uber pinnacle bosses with new chase uniques. And they also added a bunch of Atlas keystones so you know the passive tree you loved. Well, those keystones are not on your Atlas passive tree too. And I think one day we might even see cluster jewels for the passive tree, the Atlas passive tree. So let's go over what exactly the Sentinel League actually is. So the Sentinel League revolves around, there's three different types of Sentinels, right? There's a Stalker Sentinel, there's a Pandemonium Sentinel, and there's an Apex Sentinel. And you could have all three of these equipped, and it's in like an inventory pane to your side. So basically, the Stalker Sentinel follows for 30 seconds and dissipate, and it empowers a certain amount of mobs. Pandemonium Sentinel, it, you could trigger it one time, it puts out a big-ass wave or something. And it pretty much empowers a large group of enemies, right? So this is like a trickle power in power. This is like a big wave in power. And Apex Sentinels is pretty much used for rares and uniques. So you can use the Apex Sentinel when you're fighting a map boss if you want better rewards, right? So the Sentinels can be used once per map. So you have to choose the right place to use it. Now, this is a huge buff to group play because GGG actually said that each group member can use their own Sentinels in a map, so you can have up to six times more Sentinel usage if you play in a six-player party. So it's going to be very, very good for Magic Find groups. Now, the Sentinels do have a certain amount of charges, and once the Sentinels are depleted, you can actually combine it together to make a new, more powerful Sentinel, kind of like Synthesis League. 
So now we also see that there's this crazy looking passive controller. And what is this passive tree you might be wondering? Well, this is the Sentinel passive tree known as a circuit board that was inspired by a GGG member that took a genetic engineering class after taking an electromagnetic circuit class, right? So this allows you to customize your circuitry and there's no cost to respec, which is a really, really good thing. And you start with four nodes. So you basically have to connect each node and you choose your path that you want to do. And each one of these nodes affects each one of these sentinels and you don't need to connect it to every single one. So basically some of the ones are like, you can use the sentinel an additional time or you can empower more enemies. So you can eventually take up to 30 late game. And I think 30 is around like 60, 70% of all the nodes. So this could be pretty interesting to see. I do think that most people will probably just follow a build guide and get their own Sentinel from the latest YouTube video or something like that, right? So there's also unique Sentinels and these actually have a limited amount of charges that cannot be rebuilt. So you can see here, this is the number of charges a Sentinel has. And these can empower a specific map, map boss. They can also empower rare enemies doing something to them. So you can see here, this Basilisk one empowers many enemies in one shot and then it also freezes all of the enemies. So this it can actually act as a defensive layer while mapping. This one pretty much just empowers the map boss and it makes the map boss drop a bunch of currency rewards. And this one empowers rare enemies. Or yeah, the last 60 seconds it empowers 150 enemies. And when th this gives you head on her buff, right? So this is pretty cool. And this should be pretty fun to use. Now the only downside of seeing all these sentinels is you see that all these sentinels will have a number of charges that can be used. And this could actually be, so let's go look at the Path of Exile website to look at it. So you can see how all of these sentinels have a certain amount of charges. Now the problem with this is that I could see it being some annoying micromanagement because these actually have different numbers, right? Different number of charges. So you could be potentially doing eight maps and then one of these sentinels run out of charges and you have to replace it with another one. And then this one of 10 charges then runs out and then you, in two more maps, you have to replace the other sentinel, right? So I could see that being a huge problem, but let's hope that they have a good solution to it and the micromanagement is not actually that bad. But now we move on to the Recombinator and this is actually a pretty big addition. Now this is not really any, what's it called, any like gameplay thing, but it basically is a huge crafting thing that allows you to get mods that normally do not exist on certain items. So you can see here, Recombinator allows you to destroy two similar items to create a new item with similar properties. So you have to destroy a uh, to uh, armor, to jewelry, or two weapons. Now this could be pretty risky because you destroy the item so you're not able to use the item again. So what these, what happens when you recombinate them is that you combine mods, modify tiers, or add or remove random mods, or add exclusive modifiers. And I think this is the big one because you get exclusive modifiers you can never dream of. So you can see here, this ring has plus one max power charge, right? And this is something that you would not usually find. And this person actually used the recombinator on something with a hundred percent increased global defenses. So it actually combined the mod from a grasping male and moved it onto an astral plate, which is just crazy, right? And at the same time, it also added an exclusive modifier of Mage Bane. So this chest potentially has like sixty percent spell suppression, right? While also having a hundred percent increased global defenses. I could see this actually being super, super good for say an ore stack or something like that. If you can get a chest like this. So this could have a potential for some absolutely insane near tier items. And if you're playing softcore trade, the recombinator is probably like a dream come true. If you're into crafting like super end game items, then this is going to be like kind of a repeat of synthesis league with some of the items that you will see being created. So now we move on to probably the bummer of the whole announcement. This actually irked a lot of people from what I see on like just like just the general reaction on Reddit and forums and what people say in people's Twitch chat. And the fact of the matter is they're actually adding no new active skills and no balance changes at all. And they actually kind of did a funny thing here is that they marketed this as we are able to enjoy consistent character balance. So you can see here they wrote that 
We're going to try something new with character balance in this expansion. We're intentionally making no changes to character power. That means no nerfs, no buffs, nothing. Every single build and build guide made for Siege of the Atlas will work exactly the same as Sentinel. You can start planning your league starter right now with full confidence about how exactly it's going to play. So, all the best builds will still be the best builds. And, yeah, so that's actually kind of a bummer because I was actually kind of looking forward to maybe some new ascendancies or new ascendancy balances or new skills that get buffed. Like, I do know a lot of skills in the game currently can use some buffs. And it's actually kind of disappointing to see them not even try to tune some of the worst skills and make a numerical change to make it more viable potentially. But it is what it is, and they clearly focus their efforts on something else. So next up, we have a change that they kind of snuck in there, and it's something that I kind of thought they might do with Arch Nemesis, and they actually did do it in that the Arch Nemesis modifiers are now going to be core, so they're not actually adding the Arch Nemesis League in. Instead, they are adding it so that the rare mobs no longer have a bunch of mods, a Nemesis mods or Bloodline mods. Instead, all of those mods will now be combined into the Arch Nemesis mods. So you can see here this rare has Vampiric and Gargantuan. And rare monsters can have anywhere from 2 to 4 Arch Nemesis modifiers, while magic monsters can have 1. Now they remove Bloodline and Nemesis completely. And only some of them are added to the Arch Nemesis modifiers, like Storm Herald and Herald of the Obelisk are now also Arch Nemesis modifiers, right? Now, this might seem like a really, really good change, but this actually has some crazy consequences, right? Headhunter is no longer the number one belt, no matter what it map be. In juice maps, now, this is something that's kind of crazy because before, this was almost always the case. And why this happens is because Arch Nemesis modifiers are able to be gained by characters through sources such as Headhunter and Inspire Learning. Though you are only able to have one instance of each modifier at any given time, right? So this means that when you take Hasted, you will not be able to take 3 or 4 or 5 Hasted Arch Nemesis modifiers. You'll only have one instance of Hasted no matter what, right? No matter how many rares you kill. So what this means is that you'll no longer be able to stack like 20 Haste Auras or have like 15, 20 projectiles shooting out of you. And this is a huge nerf to Super Juice mapping. This is also a huge nerf to people who use Inspired, Learning, and Headhunter at the same time to get extra buffs. And this is probably going to spell the end of five ways as we know it. And people will probably have to start using an Aura Bot maybe. And what this means is that Headhunter will not be as valuable as before and that Mage Blood plus two Inspired Learnings will be the best combo. As you can see here, this rare has a lot fewer mob mods, right? So you can see here that Inspired Learning will have a lot much higher impact so Mage Blood plus two Inspires will definitely be the way to go. I do think that Mage Blood will be at the highest price you'll ever see, even with the addition of the Divination card. Now, they also added a bunch of Atlas Keystones onto the Atlas Passive Tree. As you can see here, there's these Keystones right here, here, pretty much everywhere. So what do these Keystones actually do? So some of them are pretty cool. They add a chance to get more of your favorite maps. Some of them makes it so that you can't use Scarabs or Fragments and you get more chances of extra content like Legion or something like that. And then there's also that makes some that make it so that no Atlas Notables gives anything and all the small passive ones are uh, increased effect. You also get increased pack size if the small passives grant nothing. And then when corrupted rare maps are randomized to a different property, including map base type and mods. And then these ones people were super butthurt about because they thought that this would affect DD damage, that this would affect DD damage. And you could actually make the map like less tanky if you are a super tanky character you can take make the map do 25 percent more damage but the monsters have 25 percent less monster life and then you can also if your character is not tanky enough but has a lot of damage you could do 25 percent less monster damage and 50 percent more monster life and there's also some atlas keystones that lets you block out certain league mechanics that you don't like so you can say you don't want to see a beast here you don't want to see an alva you don't want to see a legion in your map and it will increase the chances of encountering the other missions or league mechanics, right? So this should be pretty fun. It'll be interesting to see what new combinations people find and what is actually going to be the end game meta for farming, uh, what's it called, for farming currency and maps.
So they also added this thing, and this is actually what a lot of people are excited. They're actually doing another boss kill race on SSF Hardcore. So now, with all these Atlas Keystones, there's also those Atlas Keystones that allow you to fight Uber Cortex, Uber Cyrus, Uber Maven, Uber Siri Exarch, Uber Eater of Worlds, and Uber, 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 Uber Elder, right? So Chris said that these are going to be around fear difficulty level, maybe a little bit harder or maybe a little bit easier, depending on which fight you're doing. And you see here that if you're prepared to face the hardest content PoE has to offer and earn some of its most seductive rewards, right? So you can see here in this Siri Exarch fight, there is an extra mob that would be chasing you around while you have to do the bullet hell phase, right? So this is going to be an absolute nightmare of a fight. So you might be wondering, why should I even kill these bosses, right? What will these drop? So there's new Awakened Exceptional Support Gems. And I think this drops from Maven. And this kit allows you to get level 5 in Power, Enhanced, and Enlightened. There's a Thread of Hope that gives you a massive ring now. And there's Forbidden Jewels that give you new exclusive Ascendancy passives. You can see here, this one is 9 lives. So no one really knows what this actually does. So this is pretty cool that no one really know what these Forbidden Flame and Flesh jewels do until someone actually kills it. And then there's Sublime Vision, which draws an uber, 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 uber elder that gives you aura effect, additional bonus while affected by a certain aura and disables all other aura skills. Not really sure how good this jewel is because we don't really know what other roles are on this. This might be like a Watcher's Eye jewel. So we will figure it out once we actually get to see some of these drops, right? So what are these five, my final thoughts about this whole expansion or whole, yeah, whole expansion, right? So they actually nerfed boss rust and altar farming. And this is kind of sad because I do think that a lot of people enjoy doing this. So you'll see the mapping switch in to probably still doing simulacrums and later mirror tropical islands. Mainly because altar farming is nerfed. That means scarabs will be pretty expensive still. And boss rush is nerfed, so people will probably have to do mapping in some sort of juice state. You could probably do like some mid-level investment, like expedition farming or something like that. But I do think in the end, the highest currency per hour will probably still be simulacrums. And even though they say they changed the end game, I do think that people in software trade will still be doing the same thing. Now, why do I think that boss farming is not going to be profitable? The problem with boss farming in any software trade league is that there's no barrier of entry, so eventually boss farming would just go to the cost of the set a lot of times. And a lot of times boss farming is just pretty much gambling on what drops you actually get. Now this is because someone can just keep buying up all the sets and keep farming the boss, right? So unless the boss is borderline unkillable or people aren't at the boss already, boss farming will almost never be super insanely profitable, right? So GGG could actually fix this problem if they make it so that you only have like one or two portals per boss. So if you actually perform well while doing the boss, you are rewarded. And that's how they can actually make bossing even profitable in software trade. And I do think that without a new meta, especially with no balance changes at all, no new skills, no ascendancy changes, that the game will be stale for some. I do think a lot of people do enjoy the game for the build discovery and trying out new builds. So this might be a big deal. It's not really that big of a deal for me because I'm just in love with Lightning Strike, as you may all know. And I do think that there could potentially be some new builds with these Uber Pinnacle loot. Some of these items are batshit insane. Like level 5 Enlightened is pretty game-changing for some builds or this new Ascendancy Jewel. So we'll see what they have in store. And I do think that Sentinel League will be more fun than Arch Nemesis. But I do think that there's going to be some annoying micromanagement issues perhaps. But it can't really get much worse than Arch Nemesis for the micromanagement and the UI, right? And lastly... This is a huge deal for me personally because I do like to see insane rares get created with the recombinator. So I do think that we will be seeing some new mirror tier items that will rival the ones that we find in standard, right? But thanks for watching everyone. I hope everyone enjoyed this quick little breakdown. I don't really know how quick it is, but let me know what builds you would like to see a build guide for and what boss you're looking forward to doing, right? Like maybe it's Uber, 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 Elder, or Uber, 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 Siri, Exarch, or Uber, Uber, Eater of Worlds. But thanks for watching. I hope you find more mirrors exalts than me, and see you next time. Bye!